Could something that is six inches by six inches that weighs six pounds and, and, and fits inside of a carry-on suitcase replace every machine that Concept2 makes? I have no idea, but that's what this company is promising to do. Let's check it out and whether or not it even has legs. All right, so this company recently caught my attention because basically everybody was sending me a link to their Kickstarter campaign and everybody wants to know whether or not this thing is actually going to pan out. I personally have already put in for the Kickstarter campaign to get a complete kit because I definitely wanna give it a try. But what am I talking about? Well, there is a company right now on Kickstarter that is promising to make what is effectively just the flywheel of every Concept2 machine that is gonna contain everything, the monitor, the resistance, all of that. And then all of the other things that it's going to be able to do, they're going to create little packages and kits which can attach to this box to allow you to do the thing. The three that they're currently saying they're going to be able to do are Ski Erg, Row Erg, and Stand Up Paddle Erg, Sup Erg. So that's what they're promising they're gonna be able to do. Caveat, Asterisk, at any point as we're going through this, I wanna know your thoughts. Put your comments in the comment section below because I think there could be some really interesting discussion that comes from this. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Shane Farmer and this is Dark Horse where you build the life that you wanna live and we just happen to use rowing to get you there. I'm so intrigued by this thing, it's worth exploring because who knows what's gonna happen. They've so far exceeded what they wanted to raise initially. Original promised production was February, 2021. We'll see where that gets, but let's just, Go take a look. What are all the specs on this thing? What is it gonna be? What does it mean for you? So I don't know if I've said it yet, but Whipper is the name of the company or the name of the machine that we're talking about. And I wanted to go through the actual specs on this thing to just, what is it? Let's look at it top to bottom and what they're promising and what could be with this potentially very interesting machine. So first off, what's really impressive, I know there are, are mechanisms that help to make this a reality, but they fully funded their $25,000 goal in the first hour of production on this thing or the first hour that they open their Kickstarter campaign. That's huge. That definitely lends a lot of gravity. Kickstarter, I know, then starts to push it in the algorithm. A lot of good stuff happens when that happens. And for them to raise 25,000 in the first hour is really impressive. And so kudos to them. That's super cool to have done that. But let's get back to the unit itself. So again, what they've, essentially who they're going after is the Concept2 machine. And that's what's so interesting about this. They are basically saying, hey, there is a flywheel and that same flywheel operates on all Concept2 machines. Well, what if we separated the flywheel and just made that on its own and then any accessories that you wanted, you could just attach to that central unit. And that's the base concept of what we're talking about here. They've put it into a six by six by six, a literal six inch box that weighs 6.7 pounds. And that's just unbelievably light. And the image they keep showing on the campaign is it's sitting in a carry on suitcase. I don't know that I'm gonna be packing all of these accessories in a suitcase from the row erg attachments and everything. I, that, I have big feet. My shoes take up a lot of space in a suitcase. I'm not sure I'm gonna do that, but what is impressive is that this is something that would be perfect for an apartment or a small home or something you take on the road if you're road tripping or there are just a lot of use cases for this. And it's so much less expensive than paying roughly $1,000 per machine if you wanted to equip your home with a rower and a skier. And so on that, that's pretty impressive what they've done with price there. Now, as far as specifications go, the monitor actually sits in the unit itself. Now, we don't know a whole lot about what the monitor will actually display yet, but that is where it lives. One of the questions that has arisen is, does it have Bluetooth? What they're saying is that based off of how well the funding goes, there's a good chance that they will attempt to work it into the design specs before this thing actually gets launched. Again, th what they keep saying is, as long as it doesn't delay the production, which, you know, you, you have to, there's actually a company that I guess owns or you have to pay royalties to for Bluetooth. If you wanna use Bluetooth, you have to pay a company for that. So that's gonna go into things, which is interesting in and of itself. So there may be Bluetooth that comes with it, but at the moment it doesn't have Bluetooth, but it does have a digital monitor, which is going to handle that. The other piece is the resistance setting. What they are claiming is that this is going to have the same resistance as a, a pro level erg or pro level rowing machine. 
meaning at its lowest resistance and its highest resistance, they say it's going to match what a Concept2 flywheel can give you as far as resistance. And let's look at what the actual unit itself involves. What they say is that they did take inspiration from rowing machines, that they were using the flywheel as the basis for this. And they started on a, apparently a large scale and then shrunk it down. And what they have is a gear and clutch system. And that's pretty impressive to have thought through to be able to put this thing into a tiny box. And that is what is so impressive is that they figured out how to miniaturize this whole system. And that it does have resistance and adjustable resistance as well with the turn of a knob. I mean, that's pretty brilliant that you're not just stuck on a single resistance level. They say that there are five levels of resistance. I assume that's what the clutch mechanism is going to do is adjust that resistance and the gearing that happens inside the box. In prototype one, what they're talking about is that they created a planetary gearbox, which they miniaturized to create the prototype. And that was step one. But then in step two, they added magnetic resistance, which is very common in the rowing machine world and other machines. They use mag resistance as a way to be able to create increased resistance and so that's what they used as a way I believe to be able to increase resistance without having to increase space on this now what is interesting in my opinion is how they have thought to get this thing attached and this is actually pretty cool there's a little tab that sits on the back side of the, the machine it's almost like a flap that flips down and what they've done is that it's like the old Reebok pump shoes so when this thing flips down you would slide it under a closed door and you would then pump it up and it would inflate on the other side of the door and that's what's gonna make it stick to the door so that you don't rip it away from the door. And it's a really interesting way of getting the, that unit to stay in place because with something that's only six and a half pounds, that's gonna be tough to keep in place. And what I would think is that might be ultimately the biggest challenge they're up against is how much power can you really wrench on this thing before it just cannot handle the kind of load that you're giving it? You know, can you give an Olympic rower this machine and at peak power, they're not going to wreck it? I don't know, and, and we'll have to see. That's why I put in the Kickstarter order is because I just wanna be able to test this. What can, what can it actually handle when it comes down to it? Next, let's talk about the actual accessories that come with it. If you buy the accessories accessory bundle, which is what they're intending for the first accessories to be. It is going to be a stand-up paddle attachment in which they have an actual paddle handle that will attach to it. And then they suggest using something like a BOSU ball for stability so that you're actually practicing stability. That's one. Number two is the rowing machine. From my first views of what they've assembled as far as making it a rowing machine, I definitely think there can be some work done there. It doesn't ergonomically look very correct. The seat looks a little wrong. The, the, uh, the angle of the the seat to the foot stretchers. It looks like they kind of missed the rowing setup on it, if you will. And that's not necessarily a knock, but that's hopefully something that they'll take under advisement to make it a more literal rowing setup. I would hate to see this thing come out as a great unit, but kind of fall apart when it comes to the, the machine setup piece, which, you know, the, row, the indoor rowing community is very passionate about their machines, and that would easily be something that they will end up tearing this thing apart for, is if ergonomically it doesn't work. And one of the things that I noticed is currently the, the foot stretchers pivot, and that can often, that that's done with very cheap machines, cheap rowing machines, so I, you know, Things that I would just suggest that they look at is perhaps refining that. And I think they even have notes here that they're planning on reinforcing it. The other piece was when they're demonstrating it, it looks like the neck that actually holds the, the flywheel, if you will, has some flex to it. So there's some give. Those are things that are not going to work when you want to use this thing for a real machine. And then the third attachment they have is the skier. And again, pretty smartly, it attaches over the top of a door frame and then the bottom attaches at the bottom of the door frame and you have a skier. The things that I can imagine this being up against are when you would have a, you know, if you have a skier and you're on a doorway, if that's not a strong door, then you may be putting increased load on a doorway or door frame that might not be able to necessarily handle it. So maybe if this has the ability to have some kind of wall attachment, if you were wanting to have it as a fixed position thing, just some ideas that I came across as I was thinking about it. But again, if you have ideas about it, drop them in the comments below. I do truly think that what's very unique about this is that they've taken into consideration the packability of this. Now, the founder of this 
this, Luke Tipple, I believe he was a, he's a TV personality of some kind. He's the one that's claiming that this idea came to him as he was traveling around the world, filming for National Geographic, and uh, he was tired of getting into dirty, broken hotel gyms, which, as somebody who's done a lot of traveling, I will commiserate with. It is very frustrating to walk into a hotel gym and see just very poor, really unusable equipment or maybe a cheap bike and a cheap treadmill and that's all you get. So having something like this, yeah, that would be a huge advantage. But again, it's definitely gonna take up a lot of suitcase space. So that's something that I probably wouldn't be doing, but I, I gotta give it to him. It's really great that they're thinking about the packability of that. So where does that leave us as far as the timeline on this thing goes? Well, in September of 2019 is when this supposedly started. We are now in 2020, it is August. And that puts us square in the middle of the Kickstarter campaign because of the fully funding already. It says that they're ahead of schedule by a month. Apparently they were gonna wait until September, but because they've already blown the goal to pieces, that means that they are ahead of schedule right now and they have greenlit production. So October of 2020, they are going to send out the backer survey. November, they're going to have their molds built for the base unit and the accessories. December, they're gonna go into manufacturing. January, they're sending the units to actual distribution centers. And then in February, that's when they start to fulfill. So the ultimate question on this is whether or not Whipper is going to be able to deliver on the promise of a single machine in an extremely compact size that will truly replace a rowing machine, a ski erg, and a stand-up paddle erg and whether or not it will be able to fulfill all of those promises in a compact unit that stays true to the movements themselves without feeling brittle or small or underpowered. And ultimately, I'd love to know, do you think you're going to invest? Do you think you're just gonna track and watch from a distance and see what this thing does? I know I have invested for you guys, and so hopefully you'll be able to see a review, and I'll keep you up to date as things move along. If there's anything interesting that comes up, I guess we'll let you know next. So what do you think? Is this going to disrupt the industry? I think it has the potential to. Ultimately, it's going to depend on if I would say they come out with a rockin' product right out of the gates. If this thing hits any stumbling blocks in its production or in its reliability, I think that's where you'll see a product like this fail. So hopefully they're taking into account the exceptional challenge that's gonna be in front of them to try and disrupt an industry with a company that has made a machine that so many people rely on, and yet they're really breaking ground on what this is. So I admire what they're doing, and I think it's gonna be really interesting to see.